Hello, my name is Ranger Josh here at Timaquan Ecological and Historic Preserve. Uh, we are at Kingsley Plantation. Uh, the site that we see behind me uh, is the house we know as the Kingsley Plantation. It was constructed in 1798 by a man named John McQueen, a planter from Georgia. He came down here and received the Spanish land grant uh, that allowed him to build this structure here. This was part of Spain at that time. Ownership transferred to a man named John McIntosh soon after, probably about 1804, and he operated this plantation until about 1812. Uh, in 1814, it was leased to Zephaniah Kingsley, probably the most notable owner of this plantation and for whom it is named. Zephaniah had an African wife named Anna, who was a former slave who he purchased at a slave market in Havana, Cuba, then freed and married. Uh, she lived and worked on this site uh, as well. She was a, a property owner and she was a slave owner. Uh, as, a, uh, as a free black woman from West Africa, that was a pretty uh, extraordinary dynamic, uh, you could say. So again, this house was built in 1798. That makes it the oldest plantation house in the state of Florida and the oldest Spanish plantation house in the United States. Okay, we've moved behind the main house and we are in front of what we call the kitchen house. The kitchen house served two purposes in its construction. One, uh, it was the kitchen uh, in which the food for the residents of the main house and the, and the plantation owners, the food that they ate. The kitchen was built separately uh, for safety purposes. Obviously, when you introduce flame to a wooden structure, that increases the risk of fire. So therefore, the kitchen was built separately from the main house. Uh, the structure also served as Anna Kingsley's residence. So she lived in the upstairs and downstairs portion of this structure, uh, along with the four children Zephaniah and Anna produced. As I mentioned before, slave laws were slightly different in Florida being Spanish territory, as opposed to across the water uh, in the Georgia colonies, British and then later American laws. So uh, under Spanish law, slavery was not necessarily a permanent condition. It was a social condition. It was something from which one could arise. This is why somebody like Anna, who was a black woman, was able to own property, was able to own slaves, was able to manage this plantation in Zephaniah's absence. Those laws were different uh, than what we saw in Great Britain and later America, where slavery was based more upon race and it was a permanent condition from which one could not arise, could not own property, could not manage a plantation such as this. That is why this plantation and Anna's situation is a little bit different than what we see typically uh, in the American colonies. One of the things that makes this plantation such an interesting and uh, important place are the structures that we see behind me here. These are the slave cabins. These cabins uh, are oriented in an arc, a total of 32 cabins, 16 on each side of the road. Uh, they are constructed of tabby. Tabby is a material like concrete that was made by mining the oyster shells left behind by thousands of years of Native American occupation on this island. The construction method involved uh, harvesting these shells, burning them to make lime, mixing with sand and water to make a concrete aggregate, and then pouring these structures using forms. As I said, they are laid out in a, a semicircle, and this is the only plantation in the world in which you will see this orientation of the slave cabins. Uh, why is this? Well, we believe that these cabins were constructed during Anna Kingsley's time overseeing uh, this plantation. And Anna grew up in Western Africa in a Wolof village. Her villages were built in the shape of a circle with the common areas inside of that circle. We believe that these structures were oriented in the same way and in the center of this circle were the gardens for the enslaved people. This is where they grew their own food, not the food for the planter class, not the cash crop. This was the food for the enslaved. So uh, when we look at these cabins, we see that they are laid out uh, in a circular fashion with that common area in the center. And that is almost certainly indicative of Anna's upbringing in Western Africa. So through archeology span in all of these slave cabins, we've learned some very interesting things. One is that there are evidence of firearms in each one of these cabins. So that indicates that the enslaved people were actually armed. And that makes sense because they were expected to hunt for their own food in some cases. Also, we find 
sort of this West African creolization of religion. We see evidence of these things happening in these cabins, things such as quartz rocks that are not native to this area, uh, buried in the floor of these structures, uh, certain implements like the head of a hoe buried uh, near the entrance of one of the slave cabins. But uh, we did find a sacrificed chicken inside one of the cabins, a fully articulated chicken that was buried in the center of the living space. And this indicates that uh, religion brought from West Africa was alive and well, uh, even if it was in a creolized form uh, here uh, at this plantation. One of the more interesting aspects of this plantation is the living links to the past. Behind me is a live oak tree. We don't know how old this tree is for sure, but we know it's very old. It could be as old as 500 years old. We do know that it was a full grown tree when this was a working plantation. Uh, why is this important? Uh, the tree is alive and well today. In 2011, the University of Florida came here and conducted some archeology span in the vicinity of the tree. And through that archeology, span it was determined that some of the enslaved people were buried oriented around this tree. So this tree had special significance to the enslaved people who lived and toiled here. Uh, the fact that it is still alive and doing well today serves as a living link to that past. It is something that is alive and something we can touch and, and take us right back to that point, something that was important to the enslaved people who lived here.